The Rhino 7 for Windows interface will start with four default viewports. Your perspective viewport can be tumbled using the right mouse button, clicking and dragging. To zoom in the perspective viewport, hold the control key down and right click and drag. And to pan, hold the shift key down and right click and drag. Top, front, and right orthographic views will pan with just the right mouse button, and using the control key and right mouse button will zoom in the same way as it does in perspective. You can minimize and maximize any viewport by double clicking its name tab. If you have a maximized viewport, you can use these viewport tabs at the lower left corner of the screen to cycle through the other viewports. You can also use a keyboard shortcut for this, holding the control key and then tapping the tab key to cycle through those other viewports. Each viewport has a settings menu. You can either click the drop down arrow next to the name of the viewport or right click the name itself to see this menu of settings. Here you could change the view that viewport uses, the active construction plane, which is the grid you see, and also the display mode that viewport uses. There are three ways to access any function in Rhino. You could click on an icon in a toolbar group, and as you go through these toolbar groups, you'll see the sidebar on the left side changes with like-minded tools. You could also use drop-down menus, which are grouped in the same way, or you could last use the command name, and as you type, you'll see an autocomplete list of all the possible commands with the letters you've typed so far. This autocomplete list also includes a fuzzy autocomplete in the lower section where Rhino guesses what you might have meant but perhaps mistyped. On the right side of the screen we have panels. These panels can be enabled and disabled through the gear icon to the right side of their docked group. Here you can use check marks to enable or disable additional panels. These panels can be reordered by dragging the tab within the docked group, or you can drag the tab off to make it a floating panel. If you have a floating panel, you could drag the title bar of that panel to dock it separately. And at the top of that docked panel, you can drag it off again with the handle. You can also hide and show panels using the Panels drop-down menu. The difference in this method is that the panels that you show will be floating and won't be docked with this group, but the docking methods are the same. If you'd like to show a toolbar that isn't shown here, you can right-click the toolbar area, use Show Toolbar, and scroll down to find the toolbar you're interested in, put a check mark next to it, and now it will be a floating toolbar. In the same way, you can drag the title bar to dock it by itself, or drag the tab to dock it in the ribbon interface at the top, and dragging those tabs allows you to reorder that toolbar group as well. At the bottom of the screen, we have this series of check boxes. These are O-snaps or object snaps. If you click the word O-snap, you'll enable or disable the ability to snap to these types of objects, such as the end of a curve or the center of a circle. Below that, we have grid snap. If grid snap is enabled, you will snap to the construction plane major and minor grid lines that you see in the viewports. If you run the Options command or click on the gear icon in the standard toolbar, the grid section of Document Properties will give you an explanation of the total number of lines and the spacing for the major and minor lines. You can change these values, but they are based by default on the template that you choose when you start Rhino. In this case, I'm using small objects inches. If I go down to the Units section of Document Properties, I can also see the model units that are used in this template. And that is a quick overview of the Rhino 7 for Windows interface. Thanks for watching.